Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Food, Wine, and Travel Show, where we go across country and travel the world with members of the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association. Let's go. Welcome, everybody. Today is the second Tuesday of the month. So that means we are going to a destination that is a member of the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association, who we call IFTWA. It's easier to say. Uh, but we are going to South Central Pennsylvania today, which I think is exciting. We're going to Cumberland Valley, and we have Aaron Jumper from Visit Cumberland Valley. And you can go to their website, visitcumberlandvalley.com. The link is in the episode notes. So welcome, Aaron. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm excited to talk to you because we know your area is gorgeous. And with us going from summer into fall, I think that your area is going to have a lot for folks to, you know, enjoy. Um, Just at least let's just even start off with your trails. I know our audience is into following trails. And the one trail I really wish I knew about earlier so we could have invited you on to our ice cream social party we just had. Um, I did not know that you had an ice cream trail, and I don't care what time of year it is. Um, We want ice cream, (laughs) but you have a whole trail. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, we uh, we started uh, about 2017. We launched our first uh, beer trail, and we noticed just the amount of enthusiasm that was around that. Uh, People love to travel for craft beer. So then it was, where do we move towards next? And for us, ice cream was a natural next step for us uh we have uh one everybody loves ice cream it's more family friendly but also you know we have a lot of agritourism and agriculture in our area so a lot of farms who are producing and making their own ice cream that it was a natural next step to take advantage of you know these great ice cream producers that we have and homegrown ice cream uh so it was perfect for us to move into ice cream uh for the ice cream trail that we have every summer uh that we've had the last several summers and uh, like you said, it, it could be year round, but it, you know. But this uh, really but summer, we, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from from Memorial Day to Labor Day, you know, you not only get ice cream, but you can win prizes as you go along the ice cream trail. Yeah, because it seems you have a passport for the different trails, so that you can follow, get like your passport stamped or what you know, however that part works, and prizes. But it's you know, I think we like that. I mean. We do a lot on national parks and who doesn't want to go get their park passport stamped? You know, there's something about it. It's like you've achieved a a milestone or something for uh, Cedar as you travel. Exactly. Yeah. And then you start all over again (laughs) or go. Yeah. It's we were really we've sort of gamified it. You know, every year we have new prizes. We usually have new additions every year. So uh, you can. And you know we have trails year round. So if you're the, if you're looking for something new, watch watch your Delta Ice Cream Trail. You pick up. Uh, we have um we have a family adventure trail that we just launched, and so that that involves places that are uh, attractions, indoor and outdoors, which we have all year. We have a foodie mm. flavor fla- foodie flavor trail. So if that focuses on local producers of meat and desserts and your different spices, and they're all locally crafted. So it's it's gamified. So you're always winning prizes and encouraged to continue your visit. Um, we know some of these places are very small mom and pop locations. So to travel to one of them might not be realistic for people. But if they're traveling for an experience and they know that they can come for a weekend or a week and get to experience, oh, there's uh, 20 different ice cream locations. I'm going to go there for a weekend and I'm going to try to get as many places as I can or I'm going to try to go to as many places as many places on the trail um, mm-hmm. as I can. And so it's great for residents, but also great for, for visitors who want to come in for a weekend and experience all those. Mm. Where, where do your visitors typically come from? Like what are some of the, the main cities that are not too far away for folks, you know, if they're coming for a weekend or midweek escape. I mean, mm-hmm. nowadays it seems like we can travel anytime with um, remote work being so possible. For sure. And because, you know, we're, we're in the Northeast uh, and really accessible from all forms of travel. So, you know, we're kind of in the middle of the state of Pennsylvania. So a lot of, you know, Philadelphia, we have one Philadelphia on one side, Pittsburgh on the other. It's actually one of my favorite beer trail stories. There are two brothers 
One lives in Philadelphia, one lives in Pittsburgh, and they meet in the middle to do the beer trail. Um, <laughs> I love it. But, so, if, yeah, it's, it's, it's we're super easy to get to. You know, we're easy to get to from Amtrak. We're right across the river from Harrisburg, which is the capital. So we have Amtrak, train travel. Uh, there's an airport mm-hmm. nearby. But so New York City is within you know, three and a half hours. Washington D.C., Baltimore, uh, all of these major cities in the Northeast are super easy to get to from us. Uh, so we're, it's always super great. We're right in the middle of the turnpike between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. So a lot of big city travel here, and it's super easy to get to. And when you talk about these trails, I mean, so you get there. And I love that you even talk about Amtrak and things because I think people are trying to, like, cut down on being like, here, it's just us in the car all the time. You know, we're trying to do different mm-hmm. modes of travel, which also makes it easy if you've been working hard all week and you want to go have fun. Um, you don't always have to be the driver, you know, but I love that you have like a coffee and chocolate trail. I mean, come on, you know, that's awesome. And then your, your foodie flavor trail, that's awesome. Ice cream. This is, but the beer trail that has got to be really popular, especially, you know, now when, as fall starts to ease in, um, then we're Mm -hmm. thinking Oktoberfest. We're thinking, we are thinking about beer. It's, I'm sorry, but again, beer is year round. Um, in my world, right. but, but I mean, it just, we might as well amp it up a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. and do a trail. So yeah. how many breweries yeah. do you have? We have 30 locations. Um, so, uh, we have not all of them are breweries. I think we did include, uh, we we're now growing on the winery side. So now we have two wineries, oh, um, cool. and then we have a couple distilleries as well. And so we obviously, Pennsylvania is super big in the craft brewery scene. Uh, I, I don't know how it's only grown in the last several years, but uh, you know, it's Pennsylvania is one of the leading producers of craft beer in the United States. I think, I think we're first or second. Uh, So it's tons of craft brewery and it's just, it's grown rapidly, especially in our region, which is why we kind of jumped on the trail kind of early and it's, you know, free passport. So you're, you're jumping on and, you know, obviously we encourage safe travels, but you know, you can go to uh, downtown Carlisle and you can, hit five or six breweries in, in a day. Um, and it's all walkable. And so nice. it's always, it's really easy to, to kind of jump on and check out, you know, all of these different craft brews that we have and it's such a growing scene. Uh, we love that, you know, residents love it. They love the reason to, to kind of check out places that are beyond their favorite spot, but also, like I said, residents who come in and they want to stay the weekend to do the beer trail. It's certainly mm-hmm. a driver for travel for us. That's cool. And then the one trail that I think is something really cool for everyone is, well, I want to talk about the outdoors for sure, but the history trails. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, people can go, I was looking on your website, they can go see big tanks. And, you know, I didn't even know that you had a World War II prisoner of war camp. That's incredible. Uh, You know, and and yeah, I'm looking at all of this. It's crazy. Yeah, It's cool. Pennsylvania is so, has so much great history. Um, you know, whether it's through Revolutionary War or the Civil War. Mm. Um, so we have uh, the U.S. Army Heritage and Education Center, which was what the Army's like first museum uh, is in Carlisle. It's right along I Interstate I-81, so it's super easy to get to, but it's interactive. There's outdoor tanks and helicopters and tunnels, and you can go inside. It's very inter- interactive as well. Uh, so there's a lot of focus on great history attractions right here. Um, you know, we're, we're very close to Gettysburg, which I know everyone wants to see the Gettysburg mm-hmm. battlefields, but you know, we're, we're 20 minutes away from Gettysburg. So oh, it's wow. very easy to kind of experience that and then come over here and get some more history. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Cause you know, you've got Eisenhower's farm up there and, um, that's really close. So you're really close to Maryland then too, when I'm thinking yep. about it. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've been. Yes. So been easy drives on the ID one. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a great place. I've been, I have been through your area. I know it's beautiful. It really and, is. And I mean, it's so pastoral too, you know, and it's, it's gorgeous. What's, what's great about Carla, I was just telling someone this is you can have a great downtown experience. You know, you're visiting breweries and shopping and, you know, we have dining locations. You can dine from almost any different kind of uh, nationality or uh, specific kinds of flavors all in downtown Carlisle. And then you drive five, 10 minutes away and you could be on a rural farm that is making their own ice cream. And mm. it's just very easy. So you can experience kind of the best of both worlds within a very short drive. 
That's cool, though. And, you know, so you get and just driving around too, you get to see the farms and, and get the, the feel, you know, the farm to table vibe, you know, which I think is important, yeah. especially like as we talk about families and taking your kids out to so they can experience, you know, farms and, and to really get to understand where the food comes from. Um, one thing too is your trails that incorporate uh, the actual natural beauty of your region, which I think is something definitely exciting. You've got hiking, you've got, you know, waterways too, right? That people can do. And, and cycling mm-hmm. seems to be something on the list too, because if you're a cyclist, you want to go in a cycling friendly town, a bicycle friendly community, because we know, you know, it's dangerous if you don't, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. So downtown Carlisle is, it's one of those things where there, it's one of the, the best little towns for, for cycling. There are, are, are bike lanes and it's, it's pretty safe to bike there. And then also you drive about 10 minutes outside of town and there are rail trails. So former you know, railroads that have been converted to these beautiful paths that uh, can take you from Carlisle to Shippensburg, which was one of our, our, our towns, I have a, kind of a university town, a uh, college town. Uh, but you can drive, you take your bike through there and it's miles and miles. Uh, and you, so biking is great. We have the Susquehanna river and a couple of other waterways. So if you want to kayak or canoe uh, raft, it's, easy to do there and of course hiking uh we have three state parks we have the midpoint of the appalachian trail so if you're looking to you know so not even always you know you have a lot of through hikers who come here who do an entire trail but if you just want to hop on the trail and you just want to do a couple miles uh we have some of the easiest and most accessible parts of the trail so you can hop on you can do you know you can hike these very beautiful trails and get these scenic views uh, that are pretty easy if even if you're just uh, a day hiker. That's amazing, though, when you think about it, um, because I, yeah. I the, yeah, it's a beautiful trail. I mean, I I would love to actually personally do it, you know, the whole thing, you know. But no, it's always. hard. And <laughs> it is very hard. Now, one of the things that they reward themselves with is uh, so when they come through here, uh, at the midpoint of the trail is they have called the half gallon challenge, where they take a half gallon of ice cream and they eat it kind of one sitting as, as they kind of got to the midpoint is their accomplishment. There's this general store that's right a lot, right near the midway point of the trail and they stop by and get, get a whole lot of ice cream to celebrate their, their journey. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> exactly. I'm in. I, I, ice cream and, and the outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. It goes, I'm in, but you know, you're going to get the brain freeze, right? You know, <laughs> it's coming. Oh yeah, for sure. It, you know, but that's For okay sure. in, in, the, in the summer, you know, but I mean, doing that trail, yeah. uh, the through hiking, when, when people really do that, I, you know, my, I, one of my heroes in life is grandma Gatewood, who, you know, is the mother yeah. of the, of the trail and, and her history. And I encourage people to look her up. Um, there's a great biography mm-hmm. that was written by Ben Montgomery. Um, just to, I mean, she, nowadays we have hiking boots and, you know, all these things but she just went out <laughs> she just went for a walk and never it's, came home yeah you know it's an amazing story and the one we you know we, when we talk to through hikers you know they're certainly inspired by stories like that uh that they love to come continue to use the trail and so we have these great trail towns that are uh you know the towns so a couple you know about 10 minutes outside of carlisle there's this little uh village called bowling springs and they had this beautiful uh, lake that's got springs through it, uh, but it's also a trail town. So well, hikers love to come through there, grab a bite to eat, uh, and it's you know there's just it's so beautiful and it's a great spot for them to stop at. So we know that through hikers love coming through here. And that's cool. What is the lodging like? I mean, do you have bed and breakfasts? And I mean, obviously there's the the you know the typical hotels, or do you have boutique hotels? Um, what what is the makeup? Yeah. A lot of bed and breakfast, and we love our bed and breakfast community mm. uh, because of some of the just the rich history here. You're having some of these historic buildings that have been converted to bed and breakfast, and then you've got your rural bed and breakfast, and then some of your downtown. So there's a little bit of wherever you want to stay kind of B&B experience. You can, you can have that. Uh, we do have a lot of you know, your name brand hotels are all available here. And then we also have one of my favorite places uh, is called Allenberry Resorts. And it's this historic uh, location. In, it's right in, it's in Bowling Springs, as I mentioned. Uh, but they've got, you know, awesome fishing. And fly fishing is, is super big, uh, right kind of behind this, this resort. But it's very wellness-focused. 
um, but it's got a lot of history. They also do performing arts at this resort. Um, it's kind of got, it's really, really nice place to stay and where we, it was renovated um, about seven or eight years ago to just be, uh, you know, have a modern amenities in this historic location. Keep still preserving some of that history that's there while, you know, making it so that it's, uh, it's currently up to date with a lot of current standards and uh, it, it exceeds those. It's, it's a great location. That's cool. And then I was looking too that you've got some vacation rentals, but also camping and RV parks, which is cool for folks to know about. Um, and yeah, that's... camping is camping is great. Again, with that rural experience, you can you can find RV parks and and kind of post up there for a couple of days and, and experience all the outdoors. It looks like your area gets the fall colors too. Oh yeah, fall foliage is is certainly big for us. Kind of the middle of October is perfect. We usually tell people uh, the third, fourth week of October, you're going to see just a beautiful array of colors. We kind of have this fall foliage drive that we recommend people go on. So you can mm. just kind of see it all through these, uh, you know, there's hawk watching that is with that. But I mean, there's just beautiful, uh, beautiful colorage of fall foliage that happens for us. Um, I think it's probably one of one of the top fall foliage states in the U.S. Mm. And then what's winter like? Um, and, you know, we've, we've been all through your area, actually, during, you know, these mm. different seasons. And I know that you guys get cold, but it is mm. pretty when it snows. It really is beautiful. It is. It is. And so we do have nearby, you know, ski resorts. So when it does snow or even when it's not snowing and, you know, they're, they're, they're making snow. So there is skiing available uh, and then it's, you know, when the snow is very, very beautiful. And so we always recommend, you know, like we have these beautiful shots from, from Boiling Springs uh, where there's snow on the ground. Uh, you know, the holiday season is great for us. We have a lot of performances that are tied to the, to the, to the winter holidays. And so it's, it's a really beautiful time here. Mm. And, and then also, I mean, when we get into spring, yeah, pretty flowers and just, yeah, fresh countryside, right? Spring, mm-hmm. spring. There's a lot happening. It's where you know we see so many events happening. We we have we're home to lots of farmers markets. So when spring pops up, we've got farmers markets happening. We've got a lot of local produce growing, and then you're just lots of events as well. It's really great to get out there and see uh, a lot of the community events that happen during this time period. A lot of them tied to food. Uh, it happens, you know, a lot in spring, summer, and fall as well. And fall, we get to the apples. But spring, you know, you've got a lot of the produce is growing and a lot of fun, a lot of fun stuff happening in the spring. Cool, man. That's all good. It's all sounding awesome to me. Now, you're going to be part of IFTWA, the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association's conference this year, which is in September. And it's upstate New York, but also spilling into Pennsylvania, right? So we've got Laurel Highlands and you're a part of it as well. So um, travel writers will be visiting your area, right, to be able to write stories and, and, and share their experiences. Yeah, we, we've invited a lot of writers uh, to come visit us. Um, you know, it's great to – we're in great company with Laurel Highlands. It's a, few, a beautiful area. I was just there not too long ago. Um, but so I'm excited to, to get the conference, to meet writers and tell our story and hopefully, you know, continue to encourage more of them to visit our region, to experience many of the great food spots and drink spots and just the beautiful uh, outdoors we have. Uh, mm-hmm. So it'll be, it'll be an exciting conference to go to. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, IFTWA has been doing such a great job. It just it unites everyone together. And, I, and you know, travel writers are so crucial. And, you know, because I think, you know, areas like yours, too, and you've got um, independent businesses that get showcased through travel writers that people won't really always know about. And, um, you know, their followers, you know, get to hear about places they may not have been to. And then like, hey, yeah, let's go. Let's go here. And so it's really important just for our economy, you know, tourism and this mm-hmm. kind of tourism that you're offering the experiences, you know, the family, you know, focus and then all the trails, I think is really responsible tourism. So it's, you know, light on the land. It's good for small business and it's definitely fun and awesome for the actual traveler. They're going to have a time of their life. I mean, who doesn't want to go on a beer trail or an ice cream trail? Come on. Right. You know, and you've got the natural yeah. beauty of the outdoors, the parks, the history. I think it's just, and it seems like it's a place where when you were, you were talking about all the different seasons, you can go year round and different times of, you know, the week. It 
not always a, you know, a weekend um, to do these trails. So it just seems like a place to keep coming back to. Do you see that a lot with the visitors that they're repeats that come in? Yes, for sure. Visitors, uh, you know, we have a lot of data to show that we do have a lot of repeat visitors, uh, you know, and even travel writers, I'll have a writer come stay and they'll say, I, I need to come back. I, well, that was my mm-hmm. favorite restaurant I visited. Um, but so it's, we do have a lot of repeat visitors. Um, one of the things we, we did not mention, uh, but it's, we also have some of the world's largest car shows in Carlisle. Uh, there are about eight of them a year. And so mm-hmm. yeah, they, that's a crowd. They're bringing these very unique vehicles into town. Um, we've got like the largest Corvette show in the world and they do a parade. Um, but the, you know, so Corvettes, you know, we're getting ready to have that here at the end of August. And um, so a lot of just unique events we have in the area and which mm. certainly drives travel. But then, you know, to be able to do a, a trail based on ice cream or, or craft beer or local food or history, uh, it certainly brings people to travel here and experience what we have. I want all the passports at once. <laughs> <laughs> I want yeah. them all. I want to do them all. I do. I mean, it, to me, that's fine. And then. You know, the one thing I do want to touch on, because I think it happens in areas like yours that are so beautiful, that the arts start to really flourish because artists are mm-hmm. and musicians want to be in those kinds of areas. It's just um, a boost creativity, right? And that's why I say people, yeah. be remote workers, because you get to go to these places <laughs> and you look out your window while you're at a and b and you're like, oh, yeah, I can get this email off really quick. And it'll be a better email, a better proposal, because you'll be in a more creative mood of being in a beautiful yeah. setting. Right. So I just think it's better for business. But um, but yeah, what about the arts in your area? Yeah, it's uh, certainly we have a, a great art scene. Uh, downtown Carlisle specifically has many local boutiques about, you know, they're creating these, you know, whether it's glass art or, um, you know, these painters that create magnificent works. Um, you know, part of it is we have a lot of, a lot of these people who have just come here to live and retire and they've got mm. these amazing talents and then they're opening up stores. Uh, so we've got a lot of that. We've also got, uh, you know, several, we've got four universities in our, in our county. And so, uh, when we have college students who are creating art and they're coming here and then there's an aspect of to their university that has, uh, art components, whether it's museums that are tied to the art or just, you know, having to be able to, to show, showcase these great works, uh, arts is a great scene for us to be, um, you know, we, some people have, leave here with a lot less money. Um, but they certainly <laughs> picked up some, some great, some great arts. Well, and then, I mean, do you get, you know, festivals like with music and art too? Yeah, we do have, uh, we have several uh, festivals tied to music. We've got like this bluegrass festival. Uh, we've got, um, you know, downtown Camp Hill, which is closer to, to Harrisburg. They've got these great uh, art festivals that are tied uh, to artisans throughout the county and, and, th- and throughout the region, really, who come and showcase their arts. Uh, we have there's an event called Jubilee day in Mechanicsburg, which is another one of our towns. And Jubilee day is the longest and largest one day street fair, uh, on this, on, on this side, of the, on the East coast of the United States. And so a lot of artists will set up shop there. Uh, but it's a great, there's music and, and carnival rides and it's a, it's a one day street fair. It's the largest one there is, uh, on the East coast. And it's been going for the longest. Oh, nice. Nice. So, it's endless. It's just, it's a destination. It, it, yeah. We have, uh, Cumberland County is one of the, it's the fastest growing county in Pennsylvania and it has been for the last decade. And uh, we continue to see, you know, that growth has been encouraged and the quality of life here uh, just continues to get better for residents. But we also see that for, for visitors. We want to make sure that we have a sustaining uh, population and, and that they're preserving the space. And we want to make sure it's great for, for mm-hmm. visitors when they're here. So, we want to make sure that there's great dining uh, where they go. We want to make sure the trails are clean and kept up with when we have people out of town to visit us. Um, so it's for whatever you're here to travel for, we want to make sure that it's a great experience for you. Well, that that to me is the, the, the beauty of the community being connected with their 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 space you know, um, keeping mm-hmm. the historic integrity and, you know, like you're talking about the trails and everything, whatever is good for a traveler is definitely really good for the locals. 
you know, they, it works hand in hand, Definitely. you know, so it's quality of life. And if the locals are having a good quality of life, which it really sounds like it, I want to live there talk, mm. <laughs> talking with you. I'm like, <laughs> all right. You know, um, it's a good thing we travel full time. We're always yeah. like, well, what about here? You know, we're always right. looking like, well, if we ever stop where? So now I'm like kind of putting you up on this list here. And it's, it's, you know, you, I don't know, to me, when you see happy locals, then you know this is going to be an awesome destination. And the locals and the visitors get along, you know, when there's that kind of makeup. Yeah. And that's cool. Like you go in, go to a brewery, you're going to meet some of the locals there. And it's going to be a like super fun experience, you know, when it's like that. Yes. And when we talk about that, you know, we're home to uh, two, th three military bases. Um, wow. so we have a lot of veterans or, you know, military members come through here. Uh, yeah. and so they end up, it's one of the, the top ranked places for military members to retire because really? they, they've, and they've seen, they've seen the world, you know, they've been to several different posts mm -hmm. and they travel, but a lot of them end up just staying here or coming back here after their, after their time is done because they, they mm -hmm. loved the area here and it's one of their favorite places to live. Uh, well, so that's and why also, we've seen a lot of military retirees. You've, you've also maintained your, your military heritage, right? So that mm -hmm. makes it welcoming. And I think when, yeah, for it, it's so important for, you know, folks who have retired from the military to have a space where they're understood and welcomed, you know, and to have that community because right. a lot of communities, you know, are losing even their American legions and things like that. And mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, that's sad to see. And I, I think it's great if, there's places and destinations for those who have, yeah, like you're saying, have toured the world, right? And then get to a place where, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, this is cozy. This is comfy. They understand what we've been through. They understand what war is about, obviously, with, you know, the landmarks that you have and the um, the army trail and, and that kind of thing. So you there's an understanding. I mean, it, that it just sounds mm -hmm. like a happy community with really nice people in it. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. It know? is. It's it. Yes, and it's 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 growing. I mean, it's continuing. Why we 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 are continually one of the top, the, the highest growing population in the, in Pennsylvania. Uh, and you know, whether it's our veterans who are moving here or families, because of just the quality of life, just there's so much to do. Whether it's great restaurants, great shopping, uh, the outdoors certainly. Um, you know, what, it's it's a great place to to live and stay, and wow. and but certainly to travel and experience. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, we've got itchy feet to get to Cumberland Valley for sure, everybody. And those uh, from IFTWA, the International Food One Travel Writers Association that are going to the conference, sounds like you're going to have an awesome, awesome experience. We can't wait to follow you all on social media. You can use hashtag IFWTWA for all of us who are not going to this conference. Uh, you know, listeners, if you follow that hashtag, you'll see so many posts from members on their adventures around the world, literally, um, but also for this conference to be able to see what they're experiencing because they're really good at posting on social media, uh, especially on Instagram. Uh, that's where most traveler, travel writers like to hang out and show their pictures. So follow that, follow along, and also go to visit cumberlandvalley.com. Again, I'll learn more about IFTWA. Go to iftwtwa.org and keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's been fun. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Big Blend Radio's Food, Wine, and Travel Show featuring members of the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association. We encourage you to visit their website. We say IFTWA, which is I-F-W-T-W-A dot org. You can also follow us at BigBlendRadio.com. Happy travels, everyone. <laughs>